In July 1985, Dallas, Texas, Ron Woodruff is a redneck electrician and rodeo cowboy from the area. He is well into unexamined life with a devil-may-care attitude. He gets rodeo goers so pissed off after skimming them from a bet that he has to run away from them. The presence of an officer pretending to arrest him rescues him. At work, he is struck unconscious by electricity while attempting to assist a Latin illegal worker whose leg became entangled in a machine. Through all these experiences, Woodruff continuously coughs a lot. After being knocked out, he wakes up at hospital where two doctors and Dr. Eve Sachs tell him that his immunitary defenses are so low that it's a miracle he's still alive. Ron is shocked when he is diagnosed with HIV and given only 30 days to live, yet he will not and does not accept a death sentence. He remembers that sometime earlier, he had sex with a prostitute who was an IV drug user, and she may have given the virus to him. After receiving the news, he takes part in an orgy in his trailer, much like the ones he used to like so much. He also uses drugs, but when he looks at a calendar, he becomes depressed. His crash course of library research reveals a lack of approved treatments and medications in the U.S., so Ron crosses the border into Mexico. There, he meets a disgraced Dr. Vass, who runs a CD-free clinic for locals and informs Ron about numerous AIDS treatments. Ron also learns about alternative treatments and begins smuggling them into the U.S., challenging the medical and scientific community, including his concerned physician, Dr. Sachs. She notices the gold watch on the speaker who talks about the virus and the medicines. She is being told that, after all, medicine is a business. Meanwhile, Ron visits the library and reads medical literature on the subject while coughing. He remembers the moment when he most likely caught it. Ron goes to hospital again, and Eve tries to help him because he is giving a hard time to Nurse Frazen. But Ron is an ass to her, shouting that he doesn't need a nurse, but a doctor. Eve Sachs assists him to the best of her ability. She informs him that the treatments he learned about in Time magazine in Germany are not available in the United States. She sends him to a support group, but he doesn't want to be seen with faggots. His own friends no longer want to sit near him, and a bar brawl nearly breaks out. The first time he visits the support group, he just distributes pamphlets about the issue and threatens one of the audience members who tries to hug him. When he arrives at the oil field, his boss and the other workers want him out, so he doesn't even get out of his car. A Hispanic orderly steals the drugs and sells them to him. An outsider to the gay community, Ron finds an unlikely ally in fellow AIDS patient, Rayon, a transsexual who shares Ron's lust for life. Sachs is both their doctor and they share the same hospital room. On the 29th day, Ron looks bad, but not necessarily like someone ready to die. He picks up a gun and considers suicide, but cries and refuses to give in. Dr. Savard speaks to him on the 30th day. Ron pulls down his medical gown, terrified that a gay man may see him. Ron has checked himself out of the hospital. Rayan shares Ron's business spirit. In order to evade government fines for selling unapproved drugs and supplements, they form a buyer's club in which HIV-positive persons pay monthly dues in exchange for access to newly acquired supplies. Ron's pioneering underground collective beats loud and powerful deep in the heart of Texas. Ron battles for dignity, education, and acceptance with the help of a growing network of friends and clients. In the years following his diagnosis, the embattled Lone Star loner lives life to the fullest like Dr. Vass, who provides him proteins and DDC, which may help him, has lost his license in the United States. Because such drugs have not been authorized by American doctors, he is not permitted to carry them with him. Ron tries to smuggle them, but is apprehended by a border official. Ron disguises himself as a priest and claims to be taking vitamins rather than medicines. He sells the drugs on the street. The drugs take a lot of time to be approved, so meanwhile, USA's doctors are prescribing medicines which can be considered poisons. Rayon wants to buy a drug cocktail from him, but she eventually backs down since she believes Ron is a homophobic jerk. Ron follows Rayon and sells her the pills. Rayon suggests that Ron sell the cocktail in a homosexual bar. Nobody pays attention to him at first, then Rayon instructs him to smile, and he makes his first sale there. Soon after, after, Ron and Rayon form a company and begin selling admission to a buyer's club rather than selling narcotics. Dr. Sachs is concerned about Rayon, who has just vanished, and changed addresses without informing her. They were so nice that Eve was even asked about Rayon's fashion and outfit choices. She is appalled when Ron's address comes out as Rayon's new address. Eve visits Ron's apartment, and she is appalled that he is giving treatment to so many people. Ron has even began to care about Rayon's health and eating habits. At the super 
supermarket, Ron comes across TJ and introduces him to Rayon. Ron has to force him to shake hands with Rayon. The queue of sick people is visible from the road. Not everybody can pay the $400 per month membership fee anyway. Ron doesn't want Rayon to sell when high. She is a bit unpredictable because of her addiction to cocaine. A few months later in March 1987, Ron travels to Japan to talk to Dr. Hiroshi, who tells him that he was not aware of the regulations against exporting drugs. Mr. Yamada, Scott Takeda, who would sell the drugs under the counter. At the airport, he is about to inject himself but passes off. His cop friend learns that Ron has AIDS. The doctor tells him to stop selling unknown drugs which have provoked a heart attack to him. An FDA customs agent tells him that he'll bust him if he can. Sachs has even referred some of his patients to Ron. Ron makes love to somebody while everybody is waiting up. Rayon's drug addiction increases. A news anchor talks about demonstrations demanding medicines to be approved sooner. The FDA confiscates many drugs present at Ron's apartment, but they let him go with only a fine. Ron tells Rayon to stop shooting up or it will kill her. Even Ron have a date, and they talk about their pasts. Frank Young appears to TV to address the problem, but he doesn't say anything important, and even Rayon dismisses his words. Rayon is extremely thin. She starts coughing, and a gay AIDS friend of hers named Sunny takes her to hospital. Eve Sachs sees her on hospital with Nurse Frazen. Eve holds Rayon's hand, while Ron fakes Eve's signature on prescriptions. Nurse Frazen calls security when Ron storms in Rayon's hospital room and threatens his doctor. Rayon's dead. Ron calls in a stripper. Both Ron and Eve are very affected by Rayon's death. The FDA keeps on putting pressure on him, taking away his drugs. Six months later, Ron travels to San Francisco to a court hearing against the FDA, which will allow him to use drugs for personal use, something which is considered a success. Ron dies in September 1992, seven years after he was first diagnosed.